happy to host Master Ankita. After that introduction, I think I should not even talk and let us people assume whatever she said is true. But uh, I have been strictly in instructed by the former uh, outgoing president, host Master Shri Devi, that I am for forbidden from uh, doing any sort of self-deprecative humor. So uh, <laughs> I will try not to do any such, any such thing. So good evening, uh, fellow host Masters, and welcome, guys. I saw this lovely quote about legacy. Legacy is not something you leave behind for people. Legacy is something you leave inside people. Right from a very young age, I have been a huge fan of this sport called tennis. I started following tennis during the days of Andrea Agassi and Pete Sampras. I was amazed at the agility and the speed of the game. But then came along this person called Roger Federer. I became an instant fan. He was awesome. He was effortless. He was beautiful. He weaved his magic around the court. Dear Toastmasters, Roger Federer he used to play multiple tournaments across the calendar year. He used to play in hard courts, he used to play in these fancy exhibition matches, he used to play in indoors, he used to play in fancy places like Dubai or even a cold place like Switzerland. But of all the places he played at, one thing which always interested me was the Wimbledon. I asked myself, why is so Wimbledon so special? Actually, not just Roger Federer, almost all the professional tennis players feel that Wimbledon is the most special place where they can play at. I just did a bit of digging to understand why exactly Wimbledon is so special. I came to realize that Wimbledon is the oldest tennis tournament which is, which is still ongoing for more than 140 years. It has a lot of quirky rules, it has its own protocols. For example, the players are not allowed to enter the court unless they are wear, wearing pure white costumes. And you don't get any sort of food there except for some strawberries and creams. And there is all these quirky rules which has basically gone on to become a legacy gone on to become a tradition and it is so special now that everyone wants to get that Grand Slam called Wimbledon. We have four Grand Slams now, there is a Wimbledon, US Open, French Open and the Australian Open but still everyone keeps Wimbledon at the top. Then comes the rest of the Grand Slams. If I take a step back, I always draw this parallel between Wimbledon and Mekon Communication Club. You know, there are a lot of similarities between the Wimbledon and our club. We also have that same quirky rules. For example, we can't we can't come and deliver any uh, any speech with wearing a casuals. You need to be in extreme like you need to be very formal. This is an extremely formal environment, and uh, just like the strawberry and the cream, we have our own lemon tea, which has always been there week after week. And even though there are a lot of Toastmaster clubs in and around Bangalore, people always have this special place for Mekon Communication Club. We have built this legacy. We have not left anything behind for people, but we have left that feeling of Mekon inside the hearts of every person who has been part of the club at some point of time. Four years ago, I had completed my masters and uh, I had taken a conscious decision to head back to India. I had few months off and uh, I was extremely busy, basically eating and sleeping. My mom was very particular that I want. I had to join this Toastmasters club called Mekon Communication Club. I felt I don't even need such a club. I mean, come on, I've been in US for two years. I can speak English. I, I'm, not, I'm not having any stage fear. What exactly is a Toastmaster club going to do in my career, right? But my mom was extremely persistent and you know mothers, so we can't say no to them. So one day, finally, I decided to come to the South End Circle. I came to South End Circle for the first time and before I could find Mekon Limited, the first thing which caught my attention was obviously the A to B opposite to our building. <laughs> I swiftly went inside and ordered a coffee and I saw two gentlemen in very serious discussion. One was an elderly gentleman, other was a very young man. I could hear bits and pieces of their conversation. It went on the lines of membership renewal and the quality of the meetings. And also this older man's face was slightly familiar because my mom used to show me pics of the club's happenings and I have seen this person in that uh, photo. So I walked up to him and I told, uh, excuse me, are you from Econ Communication Club? He affirmed that, yeah, I am from Econ. I immediately told him that I am uh, so-and-so's mother, uh, sorry, so-and-so's <laughs> son and uh, she, has, she has held a lot of fancy titles here in your club. So I would like to join your club immediately. You know, I, I wanted to join the club immediately because I wanted to get my mother off my back. So I wanted to join the club immediately. And he told these words, literally every one of us know. You are most welcome to come to our club as guest for three times. After that, if you feel if this is the right place, then of course you are most welcome to join. No prizes for guessing. Those two people were DTM AK Prabhakara and Junior AK Prabhakara in those masters. <laughs> so that was the starting point of my journey in Mekon Communication Club. Now I had obviously had reservations about joining a Toastmasters club because I was because I thought I was a big shot. Then I came to this club and I was dumbfounded. I could see the plethora of knowledge behind every address of DTM AKP sir. 
I could see the class and humor in every speech of Toastmaster M.U. But I could see the precision and the vocabulary whenever Dr. V was behind the lectern. I could see the humbleness and easily approachable nature of DTM Nagaraj Rao, even though he's the international director of Toastmaster International. I could sometimes feel uh, inspired by the dedication and the integrity of DTM Sugandhi whenever she gave a speech, whenever whatever, whatever she gave came from her heart. I could see the cool and calm Ajay Chitranjan. I could see the fast and lightning Toastmaster Supreet. And uh, sometimes I used to get scared with the thunderous responses of Toastmaster Veera But of course, I knew that I was part of something very special. I knew that this is public speaking at a different level. I used to come, blabber something, make people laugh and go. But this was something, something much more than that. This is not just public speaking. It's basically going into the very core of one's personality. I, I was like amazed, I was swept off my floor and I thanked my mother profusely for introducing me to Mekon Communication Club and from then on there has been no turning back. Week in and week out we have been able to create magic in our, in our club meetings. Week in and week out people come here and there is some takeaway for each and every person who attends our meetings. At this point of time if you go back to the person who was having coffee the first time he came to South End Circle and tell him that you are going to become the president of Mekon Communication Club one day, he would have surely laughed at you. But you know what? Mekon has taught me that believe in the unbelievable. Even I can become the president of Mekon Communication Club one day. But the president of Mekon Communication Club, I mean I am still saying it's Toastmaster Sri Devi because it, it's going to take me some time to get used to it. But I truly understand the trust and responsibility the elder and the senior members have put on me by giving me this very important role. And I assure all the members that I will put my best efforts to make sure that we take the club in the right direction and make it a bigger and a better club over the coming years. At this point of time, I would like to thank a few very important people. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my first mentor, Toastmaster Rohit. Uh, even though he's not a current member, he was the past president and he has inspired me to be a better speaker and a speaker with content. So uh, I sincerely thank him for that. Next, I would like to thank three of my current mentors. But the fact of the matter is they actually don't know that they are my mentors. It's like, it's like I'm the Ekalaiva and they are the Dronacharyas. Except the fact that I still have my thumbs with me. But the thing is, each time they are behind the lectern, I learn so much from them. I would, I would go on to say that they are not just the Dronacharyas of, for me, they are the Dronacharyas of the Mekon Communication Club. I would sincerely like to thank DTM AK Prabhakara, DTM MU Bhatt and soon to be DTM Dr. Vijayashri for inspire, inspiring me week in and week out with their addresses and their speeches. Thanks a lot for whatever you have done to me sir and ma'am. And finally, or before that I would also like to talk a couple of lines about the outgoing committee. As uh, our outgoing president Toastmaster Sri Devi said, we have already reached 8 DCP points. That basically goes on to show the amount of dedication all the people in the executive committee have put in to reach that point. And also the, all the collective efforts of the, all the members of Mekon Communication Club. So thanks a lot for that. And uh, what do I say about Toastmaster Sri Devi? I, as I already told you, she is like way younger to me. She is almost my younger brother's age. But whenever, <laughs> whenever she wants something to be done, she gets it done. You know what? That is called leadership. That is what people in corporate want. No one, no one cares about how old you are. No one cares about how young you are. If you are able to get the things done, you are the right person for the job. Toastmaster Sri Devi and I always have had our differences. We used to argue about a lot of things. We used to be at loggerheads all the time. But our common goal has always been the highest quality of each and every Mekon meeting. That common goal has basically enriched both our uh, experiences as president, president and vice president education. And I'm extremely glad that I was a vice president under Toastmaster Sri Devi's term. With a grit, with her tenacity, with her charisma, with her, with her ability to command respect, with her ability to get things done somehow or the other, I'm, I'm like not even, I'm not even going to be surprised when she becomes a rock star in the corporate world of tomorrow. So thank you Toastmaster Sri Devi for all the help you have done. Uh, yeah, that's my So finally I would like to thank each and every member of Mekon Communication Club. Uh, you have made me a better person, I am saying it from the bottom of my heart. You have laughed at my lame jokes even though they are not funny. You have been nice to me even though uh, I might or not be nice to you. You have always, always taken those one minute or two minutes to write a great job done. A nice speech in the chits and give it to me. It basically basically lighted up my whole week. So this is extremely this is an extremely positive place. Let, let's, let's face it, like more than public speaking, more than leadership skills, this is an extremely positive place which is filled by extremely positive people. And not just that, each of the members who come here are 
doing extremely well in their respective careers. So it's not like people don't have any other job. That's why they come to Mekon. <laughs> because if you if you just dig up, you just go dig up uh, about the members. Uh, background like people are doing extremely well for themselves and they are extremely successful in their career but still they come to mekon because they know that it offers something that some some extra edge be it something which is positive in your career or be it something which makes you feel good if it makes makes you feel good what more do you want in life so i'm i'm most indebted to each and every member of mekon communication club for uh, wherever i am today you have made, you have made me a more positive person than what i was 4 years ago so a sincere thanks for that now let's move on to the business end of the my speech i'm supposed to come up with the goals and plans for the upcoming term for mekon communication club so let us see what's before before we go into the ppt i would like to say this uh, one uh, important advice my boss gave me in uh, my office he said whenever you you feel like you have a meeting make sure you make some slides so that people <laughs> think that you have put some effort on it so i'm trying to follow the same funda here so let us see what is the road ahead So as Toastmaster Sri Devi said, we are already at eight DCP points. So basically, most of the hard work has already been done. But we want to ensure that we have a singular focus and make sure that we reach that ten DCP points. That's the first aim of each and every member of the executive committee. Next, uh, we have pathways. Uh, we have pathways which Toastmaster Sri Devi talked about. It's a new curriculum. There are a lot of ambiguities and stuff like that. But one one main thing which we need to understand is the traditional path of comp CC and uh, CL is going away with this term. So you you basically don't have any option but to adopt pathways. So we are we need to get a serious move on with pathways. There are certain uh, criteria in GG Plus awards like you need to have more than 80 percent of the people who have completed level one. You need a lot of people who have completed their paths. And even though we have a lot of senior members who are very advanced in their traditional paths we still don't have we still don't have that push yet with regards to pathways so i give my word that each of the executive committee members will be open to any sort of queries from the members with regards to pathways and uh, i give my word that we will ensure at least 3 to 4 people complete a path by this term now what is going to happen with these 3 to 4 people who complete their paths we have already identified identified the people who are at the at the at the position of completing their paths they are going to be the torch bearers of pathways for mekon so they are going to show us how it's going to be done so once people are, people shows how it's going to be done then it's not going to be that big a deal to complete it so i am i'm giving my word and i'm 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 also rest assured that members will cooperate when i say that at least 3 to 4 people will complete their paths by this term now we have talked about all the important stuff like dcp and uh, pathways and toastmasters with regards to that uh, dta mega prabhakara has this lovely uh, thing which always says those masters is a place not for strategic leadership but for operational leadership so i am going to keep that in mind sorry if uh, if if you don't like what i'm saying but i'm going to be super old school i'm i'm not going to tamper with the structure of those masters we have done something right for 22 years i'm not going to tamper too much with the stuff i am going to keep the structure as is in place but sometimes to break the monotony we are surely going to have some interesting things like say a panel discussion or a different approach to table topic sessions for example uh, uh, as toastmaster shri devi already pointed out we are going to have a felicitation ceremony for all the dtms or to soon to be dtms uh, upcoming term we will ensure that there is a panel discussion and each of the dtms give their opinion on how exactly we achieve this mountain for uh, anyone who is fairly new to toastmasters achieving a dtm goal is basically like climbing the mount everest uh, even though it's it might sound like a an enormous task when we talk to people who have actually done it we are surely going to get the belief that we also can do it so we are going to surely have panel discussions and we will ensure that people are on same page with regards to that and finally why are we doing all this the the most coveted thing which we all want to do and make sure that we get is the golden gavel and golden gavel plus awards to be very uh, candid with you the golden gavel plus awards uh, award is going to be supremely tough because there are a lot of criteria with regards to pathways for example 80% of the people need to complete level 1 and then uh, a lot of other stuff which is which is going to be tough uh, i'm not denying that but uh, even if we go down we'll go down swinging and i'm i'm uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, we will we will try all our all our efforts to make sure that we go and get those golden gavel and golden gavel plus awards because come on guys we are mekon communication club we are supposed to be the flag, flag bearers and the torch bearers for all the other toastmaster clubs so moving on i would like to wrap up my uh, address with one thing which uh, uh, toastmaster uh, dtm nagraj rao said he said 
that the magic of Toastmasters does not happen in Santa Ana, California, or the Toastmaster headquarters, or in the, <coughs> this, the you know humorous speech contest or international speech contest. He says the magic happens at each and every club meeting where people come and give their hundred percent with dedication and sincerity. That's where the magic happens. In Mekon Communication Club, this magic has been happening for the past 22 years, week in and week out. We will make sure that even moving forward, this magic keeps keeps on going. And I'm, I assure you that uh, the executive committee is not just a bunch of people with fancy titles. We are here uh, to serve the people, and we are here. We are we have seen people like DTM Nagraj Rao. Serving the people, even though he was the international director, he was extremely approachable. He, he, he always talks about the concept of servant leadership. We will take that as our uh, as our uh, template. We will follow that, and we will ensure that everyone whoever comes inside the room of Mekon Communication Club, club goes out enriched. And that is going to be our goal. And we will make sure that we are better club tomorrow. And again, we are always Mekon Communication Club, and we will keep continuing this legacy and we will go from 22 to 40 to 50 and maybe one day hopefully Sri Devi's kids and <laughs> my kids will get installed here and uh, maybe the MCs might say that her mother or son was also a member. So that's the legacy we are talking about. So we will keep we will keep going at this and at this point of time I would uh, like to uh, sincerely thank the uh, Mekon Limited management for uh, allowing us to continue with the you know this uh, Mekon communication club and we uh, are sincere thanks to you sir and uh, I guess it's a vastu of the place which has made it, <laughs> which, has, which has made us so successful here so thanks a lot for that sir and with this I would like to thank each and every member who has uh, trusted me with this uh, enormous uh, role and uh, I'm pretty sure that all of the executive executive committee members are like super thrilled to take up this new challenge and we will always be there by the side of uh, Toastmasters and we will be the silent contributors we will not uh, Hopefully, we will not be noticed uh, even neither for the good or the bad reason. So, with this, I would like to uh, hand the charge over back to the MC of the day, and uh, uh, you guys are going to keep hearing from me every week. So, let's. <laughs>